For sure, maybe, for sure, not, for sure, eh, for sure, bump, 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 Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Hats or Hats. And today we'll be reviewing the premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season 7. Queens that haven't entered the workroom in 10 years are here and I'm dressed like a scene queen. Life's finally coming full circle. In the premiere episode, RuPaul challenged our winners, Stripe Versus and Choreo, for a collaboration on RuPaul's new song, Legends. And the runway theme was I'm Crowning. We've also got tons of new, exciting twists and changes for this season, so let's break those down real quick first. RuPaul let us know there's going to be no eliminations this season. And each week, RuPaul will pick two top queens to award legendary legend stars to. And those two legendary legend star receivers will lip sync to give the golden plunger block to one of their competition and win a cash tip of $10,000. And by the way, when a queen gets blocked, that means they won't be eligible to win a legendary legend star the next week, although it seems they will be able to compete, lip sync, and win the cash prize. The legendary legend stars will come into play at the end of the season, where RuPaul will let the top four queens with the most legendary legend stars. Participate in the lip sync La La Perusa for the crown, and our final winner will take home the title of Queen of Queens and a cash prize of $200,000. Also, Bob has been announced as the official host of the pit stop, and the queen that came to the workroom at last dressed like the hamburger was indeed Raven. And now that we've taken care of housekeeping, let's go ahead and rank these queens from rottest rat to hottest hot. And on my all winner scorecard, I've awarded each queen up to five hot flames for their runway presentations and five for their main challenge presentation, where I have further broken broken down those five into lyrics and choreography presentation. <laughs> Say presentation again. First up and coming in at the bottom of my list today is Evie Oddly. In the performance, she sang, Oddly, it's Evie. I can't be beaten, believe me. Nope, nope, I'm freaky like Friday. I won the crown my way. And I'll make this next one look easy. Ooh. And I've awarded Evie two hot flames for her challenge performance because I think the lyrics could have used a little bit more elevation. She has spent a lot of time in the past and continues to do so now telling us how weird she is, which of course I love and appreciate, but I feel like you have to tell everyone how freaky and weird you are all of the time. It just gets a little redundant. And I wasn't looking for Evie to show us a different side of the oddly, but I was maybe looking for a little more cohesion between her and the rest of the group since it was a group challenge. And I think she just kind of went out of her way to be like, look how different and strange I am with my back bends, as entertaining as they are. So I'm gonna leave it at a warming up. And grab your coloring books over on the runway. She has taken the I'm crowning theme into like wax crayons, melted all over her body. It's a really interesting interpretation of this runway category, although I will say it was interesting to see everybody come out so opulent, elegant, and glamorous, and then to have her come out in this kind of very structured armor-esque silhouette made of crayon wax. And it was like, okay, this is very different. But if it is gonna be something so different from everybody else, I do wanna see all of the tiny pieces and parts be absolutely perfect perfect. And you could see the undergarments beneath all that crayon wax, like on the sides and in the back, and not in a good like, ooh, look how I'm revealing this this way, but more in a like, oops, this outfit isn't finished way. She also did acknowledge this look was a nod to early RuPaul punk looks from the 90s, which I did appreciate that reference. This look for me is going to be a warming up. And next up, but first, your Scentbird scents are here. <gasps> My favorite time of month. I can't wait to sniff them. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try a new designer perfume, cologne, and even unisex scent from the comfort of your own home every single month. And Scentbird works directly with brands like Prada and Gucci to bring 100% hot, authentic scents directly to your doorstep. Let's see what our little scent birdie brought us this month. We've got Confessions of a Rebel. Get a room. Layer mandarin, smooth woods, liquid vanilla, clary sage oil, and a bite of forbidden apple. We've also got rag and bone, cypress, giving notes of cedar and vetiver, and I get entranced by the natural beauty of the woods. Mm. I also got melon and goats, bergamot, which is uplifting, spicy, and brisk. And here's the tea. Designer fragrances can cost hundreds of dollars. And don't even get me started about the difficulties of picking one out. But Scentbird has solved all of that with their online quiz. They can help you find new fragrances you'll love. And Scentbird's a bargain at just $16 a month for a full 30-day supply. But guess what? They partnered with me to bring you an even deal. When you click the link in the description of my video and use code BUSSYQ55, you'll get 55% 
off your first month at Scentbird, which by the way, comes out to just $7 to smell like a million bucks. You're welcome. Ah. Mm. <sighs> Thanks, Sinford, for sponsoring today's video. And next up from across the pond, we've got The Vivian. In RuPaul's Legend song, her verse came in after several high intensity rap verses, and it felt like a really nice reprise and, you know, fresh breath of air. I also think it was a great showcase of her voice. She sounded really pretty on the track. How much of that was like, you know, her natural vocal training versus auto tune? We may never know, but she sounded good. Queen of Queens has always been my future. Since my life found a way, hey, yeah, gonna show what the UK's got. I'm ready to start my reign my reign. And I know when I say those lyrics, they don't sound as good as they sounded when Vivian sang them. But I do want to give her credit for sounding ethereal, pretty, and powerful right in the kind of middle of the song when there were a bunch of heavy hitting rap verses right before her. I'm giving her a challenge performance for Hot Flames and over on the runway. She has her inspirations here are Iris Van Herpen, Vivian Westwood, and Burlap Bags. And I do see elements of that very edgy, punky Vivian Westwood style with those ruffled edges and kind of almost unfinished looking pieces throughout the outfit. I think the gown and the headpiece itself are really gorgeous. They definitely say crowning. She's even got a scepter. That said, I did struggle with this look a little bit and not because I don't appreciate what she was doing here with the ode to fashion, but because that bone color was so close to our natural skin tone and on those stage lights, she just kind of looked like one giant blob. Those stage lights are not meant for white garments. They're just not. Or all black. So had that main bone color being closer to the brown burlap of like let's say the shoe I think it could have had a lot more bang for her buck still a great look but because of how it was delivered I'm gonna leave it at a warming <laughs> next up look over there it's a dinosaur rawr <laughs> XD. I'm just like so random. Jada had a really emotional moment on this episode where she was crying because she felt like she had won the lottery but couldn't actually use her prize. She just had to look at it from far away. Of course, using a metaphor to describe her winning season 12 in the middle of a worldwide pandemic where she couldn't go tour. She really was robbed of having that international drag race tour that I think helps a lot of the winners really solidify their self-confidence. And it just broke my heart to think that someone like Jada who is literally perfect thinks that she like didn't deserve to be there so really nice to have the sisterly moment with all the queens on to the performance her lyrics were the legend's back again gonna snatch the crown about to turn the whole world upside down the worldwide pandemic with seven more queens with a set for mama Ru, though i can't even sing such a fun verse and sure her lyrics did kind of rely on that very traditional verse lyricism where she's like I'm sickening I want to get the crown but she paired it with two really great instances of comedy where she did a little slap to Raja and then that auto-tune fall at the end of her verse and because those two elements were delivered so well I actually laughed that whole track thinking that she was one of my favorites because I laughed twice overall I loved what she did and I think she proved herself a standout on episode one which in a competition like this girl you gotta be showing mama Ru that you deserve that crown from the get. This performance was hot. And on the runway, she had easily one of the best looks tonight. She's giving me whimsicality mixed with perfection, which I think is where Jada's drag has found a beautiful little niche. That giant beehive with the flowers and then the tiny little fairly odd parents crown on top is just such a perfect amount of camp and beauty blended together into what is the essence. Miss Jada, I think this look was Next up, Monet Echange. We hear from Monet and Trinity as well in confessional this episode that they are not interested in sharing the crown this time around. We've also got an interesting little potion brewing with Miss Monet and Trinity, the twinners. They actually had a little aside where Monet offered her an alliance. The benefit, of course, from blocking each other from winning legendary legend stars, that is. But we'll chat more about that later. In the performance, Monet's lyrics were, realize the triple crown is why I'm here. And that's what I had to think about. She's talking about her congeniality win, the win of All Stars 4, and now the Queen of Queens crown that she's trying to claim. Smart. Queen of Serving Face, seven other bitches know. Beep, 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 beep. Can't say those letters or those acronyms or they get me demonetized. I want All Stars 4 and I'll do it again. I'll do the bop, bop, bop for me and my fans. Her lyrics were some of the best flowing of the entire cast and the way that she brought the energy and charisma and intensity to this track while at the same same time kind of like telling everyone exactly what she's going to do I think was the right move and in a smart way we love to see it plus this like Amazonian warrior goddess mixed with scorpion from Mortal Kombat outfit she was wearing on stage was amazing 
than hell, even. But let's take a jog on over to the runway. Monet will meet us there in her tracksuit. This is an interesting look to me. I think the hair is phenomenal, and from the waist up, it is a perfect look. I love that she took of that very casual fashion vibe and elevated to the highest nth degree. That is what she does best. However, she lost me with the, like baggy white pants. I think this look would have just been a 10 out of 10 excellent 10s across the board if the tracksuit had been gone into a big ball gown. And I know, not everything has to be a ball gown, but just seeing the baggy windbreakers coming out and like the brown heels, it just felt like, oh, we were so close for me. But you know, I think the judges loved it as is and girl, that's all that really matters. Who am I? Nobody. This look is hot. Next up, Trinity the Block. I, if y'all are on Twitter and Reddit and all those places, last year she changed her Twitter name to Trinity the Block for like a good period of time as she was dealing with like people harassing her and stuff, which please stop harassing people on Twitter. What is that? Stop doing that. But that's just an aside. I could not stop thinking about her calling herself Trinity the Block and then the idea of this whole like twist being that the queens were blocking each other. And I'm just wondering, will she be able to reprise her title as Trinity the Block in All Star 7? to be determined. In the performance, she's saying, guess who's back here to slay again? Under my belt, count them, seven wins. This southern gal on her game, body for days, make you say ooh la la. Herstory, know me by name, this be more than rain. Set it on fire, yeah, yeah. And I'll be honest, her challenge performance overall, like the lyrics and the way they were delivered on the track didn't do a lot for me. They felt almost like they were not hitting in the right parts of the song, but that's not to say there weren't some good little pieces in there, like under my belt, count them, seven wins. I guess the even gal Aggier part was her admitting that she didn't even know her own lyrics and was struggling to keep up lip syncing them. But even though that part of her challenge performance wasn't perfect, I think she still absolutely delivered in terms of charisma and stage presence. Her challenge performance, because it was so charismatic, I am going to give a very safe high to. And honestly, she may not need to tell another joke ever again after what she delivered on the runway. Wow. Blue, crushed velvet dreams. This look, soft, supple, elegant, beautiful, opulent. This is like the draggiest form of drag, right? This is high pageantry mixed with the strange mind of Trinity the Tuck. I love every centimeter of this. And for everything that's going on with this, the beating, the stoning, the sequining, the giant literal like arm floaty blue crushed velvet pillow cushions on her arms, it could have been too much and too busy, but she found a way to change the different tones of blue throughout the outfit to keep it dynamic and keep your eyes going like, whoa, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? And the orange hair, oh, she thought about every detail. When I hear a theme like I'm crowning, this is what I want to see. This look was hot. Next up, more for Gemini. It's Raja. If you're not following Raja on Twitter, you're missing out on a daily update of the Gemini astrology horoscopes. She actually opened the verse and saying, Raja the goddess, the supreme deity, there is no rivalry. God lets you worship me. Iconic style, transcending he or she, refer to my pronouns as thou. Drop to your knees and bow. Ah. I'm really big on lyricism and metaphorical meanings, like all of this, you know, the allegory that she is bringing into what she wrote and the way she had couplets in there as well. I loved what she did here. In terms of lyrics, in terms of overall challenge performance, I personally was not a huge fan of the like pink Power Rangers bodysuit that she was wearing with that blunt bob. Not for me, that was a rot. If she had matched the ethereal deity goddess lyrics to a more deitized performance present presentation could have gotten five hot flames but because of what she did with the outfit and the bob i'm gonna leave it at 3.5 hot flames here over on the runway she lets us know that raja in indonesian actually means king and she here is seen giving us a king louis the 14th reference i also think this maybe was a way of her to reference herself yet again right her entrance referencing her own entrance and now this runway i think referencing her extravagant drag runway this outfit is phenomenal. I love what she said. She said, I designed the shoe and then I designed the outfit around it. Like what? Crazy. This look is absolutely five flame hot. Next I have Guadalajara Ducks back. 
it's Jinx Monsoon. Miss Jinx had an excellent showing this episode. Oh my God. She started off by winning the reading challenge, which I 100% agreed with. I think the only other person that came close was maybe Raj is just because it was so stupid and silly, but it's all stars and Jinx doesn't just win the title of winning the reading challenge. She also wins a $2,500 cash prize. In the Legends track, Jinx sang and rapped, Hello world, I'm Jinx Monsoon. I'm here to make your stepson swoon. Rub-a-dub girl, get in my tub. Mommy's gonna scrub dub dub on these sobs. Yes, I'm Jinx and I aim to please. Don't believe me? Check my knees. Her performance was ridiculous, over the top, a little subversive and both entertaining to watch on stage and funny when you think about what she's actually saying. She absolutely nailed this challenge. Did it necessarily say, I'm a legend, I'm going to live on forever? Maybe not, but she still had my favorite verse and performance. She is so funny and so smart and it just shows every time she does anything. So this, absolutely amazing. She was oozing hot mommy juices and this gets five hot flames for me. And on the runway, again, showing her smarts. She comes out in what she describes as a Mary Queen of Scots meets Queen Elizabeth I meets Angelina Jolie with that little leg that pops out at the end, of course, referencing Angelina's iconic red carpet look from like, what, 10 years ago? Loved to see that reference. And not only was this look full of beautiful inspiration from, you know, iconic royalty eras and modern day pop culture, but to approach the I'm crowning runway theme with a Virgin Mary ray of light crown. Because the Virgin Mary was what? Crowning for the immaculate birth. Subtle subversities here that I am appreciating. Plus, this is, you know, Jinx at her highest form in her signature color. She looks amazing. This look is hot. And sharing a 10 out of 10 score with Jinx for me tonight is Shea Coulee. These two are just so different and approached both the runway and challenge so oppositely tonight. And that's why I have paired them together at the top of my list. This episode actually started off with each queen getting a little runway advice from Naomi effing Campbell. <laughs> Gag of the century. She tells Shea Coulee that she has like a perfect, wouldn't change it, best runway walk in the world, like gives her all the praise that I think Shay wanted and could possibly ever need to hear. Like what more validation could you possibly want out of life than RuPaul telling you that you are worthy of winning a crown and inviting you back from all winners and having Naomi Campbell tell you that you have a perfect runway walk. We get it, Shay is perfect. That's the tea. And in the performance, she shows off her unshakable confidence. That's right, save the best for last. I'm Miss kool but did you gotta ask? Better bring the energy, cause slang is my legacy, and if you ain't scared of me, Miss Thing, you better be. Delicious lyricism that is confident, iconic, funny, and also very serious, right? She said, if y'all give me the block, oh, it's gonna be over for you, honey. She gets five out of five hot flames in the performance and over on the runway, she is giving an homage to a Queen Nefertiti hair with these insane ear prosthetics. That got me, girl, that got me. I was like, when did she stretch her ears out? It was prosthetics. And I really loved the dress that she was wearing because it's such a beautiful color story that we don't often see on the main stage of like, RuPaul's Drag Race. She's representing and giving a love letter to a different culture and value set that needs to have this light shown on it because it is so beautiful. Such a scrumptious look. Shay, this look is hot. And losing is the new winning, but not on this season. Shay and Monet actually earn our legendary legend stars this episode. And at first it did kind of surprise me, but then I remembered, right, they are really just judging based on the challenge. And for tracks like this, I do feel like what the judges are often looking for are those high energy, pumpy lyrics that are easy to learn and also say a lot while saying a little. Because I think if there's one thing that RuPaul likes more than comedy, it's confidence and both of these verses showed, I mean, they were dripping in it. So I do understand. However, my top two would have been Jinx and Shay. And in the lip sync for the ability to block one of their contestants, Miss Shea Coulee takes it and gives the bedazzled plunger to Trinity the Tuck. We didn't really get to hear much reasoning this episode about why Shay chose Trinity. I would suspect that she has identified Trinity as somebody who is extremely competitive and she's the only queen there that's got more wins than her. So I think just going off something like that, it made the most sense. But I will say in terms of analyzing the episode as a TV show, this did feel a little anticlimactic. It maybe would have had more of a payoff had we as viewers known, like let's say the next challenge was going to be Snatch Game, right? Because then the queens would have been able to make their decision based on what they thought their competitors were good and bad at. And yeah, I do think she still would have made the same decision here, but maybe it also could have gone to Jinx because Jinx had one of the most iconic Snatch Games ever. Other little analyzation things that I picked up on was, I 
did not notice a like bottom queen edit. Shay very much got the winner's edit this episode. And if anything, I felt like Viv had the least presence throughout the episode, but that did leave me wondering, how is this going to affect the pacing of the season with no eliminations and little conflict? I mean, getting the golden plunger and being blocked from getting a legendary legend star sure has its consequences, but are the fans, are we going to feel those consequences? And I'm saying all this to say, I have a sneaking suspicion that this isn't the last twist we'll see because this is a show that has in large part built its base on drama. And if we're just kind of getting a, you know, winner's tour to talent every episode, it will be entertaining, but where will the drama come into play? Finally though, let's move into our hottest hots on the runway. It's going to go to... Drainy the Tuck. And in the main challenge, I've got to split my Hust Hots between Jinx and Shay. I think they approached the song completely differently and excelled equally in their own ways. And I also asked my patrons to vote on their Hottest Hots over on patreon.com slash fussyqueen. That's my members only website, where my patrons get exclusive member benefits like early access to my videos, access to exclusive videos, and access to the Bussy Queen Discord server. And this week in the performance, they voted for Shay and on the runway, Jinx Monsoon. And lastly, I want to say thanks so much again to today's video sponsor, Synthbird, for keeping me smelling fresh. I also want to say thanks to my generous patrons for making my channel possible and give a special shout out to Nicholas Pettigrew, Sophie, Francisco Abate, who've all just joined my Patreon at the hottest hot and hot tiers, and Adrian Berwinkle, Alessandro420, Angel, Cyrus, Daniel Dramond, Dark Sided Otter, David Webb, Dickie, Felicia, Frankie, Hector, Hector Simancas, JB, Jeffrey, Joseph, Josh Marchant, JP in Dallas, Kyle Hermes, Laura, Lissette, Lewis Labrador, Ruff, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxi Low, wow! Michelle, your bell! Miss F, Neely, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Willy, and Will and Ton, who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. You're not a scene kid unless you're hairspraying like every five seconds. And that's just the truth, T period, mama.